All right, so let's talk about automatic stabilizers. Basically, an automatic stabilizer is, some, is a law. It's a law that Congress has already passed, and its job is to positively affect the economy when things happen in the economy that lead to either a recessionary gap or an inflationary gap, okay? So let me give you an idea, okay? When we go into a recessionary gap, when the economy goes into a recessionary gap, okay, that means that real GDP, okay, real GDP is down, right? Now, by Oaken's law, that means that unemployment, the unemployment rate, unemployment is going to be higher. So in a recessionary gap, real GDP is low, unemployment goes up. We produce less, people get fired because we're not producing as much stuff. They don't need as many employees. We have cyclical unemployment. We're in a recessionary gap. On the other hand, in an inflationary gap, real GDP is high. Real GDP is high, and that leads to low unemployment. Therefore, there are more people working than should be working. And I know that sounds crazy, and I've said it before, but we're overusing our labor resources. Real GDP is high, that's good, but it's too high. We are overproducing in the economy, we are in an inflationary gap. Well, there's something interesting that happens when people are employed and unemployed. When the unemployment rate is high, that means there's a lot of people out of work. And because they're out of work, income in the economy is low. People do not have as much money to pay their bills. Because they don't have as much money to pay their bills, oftentimes they're in trouble. They can't buy all the food for their house, or maybe they can't cover their electric bill. And therefore, there's an increase in need for help. So people need more help from the government when unemployment is high because they have less income. But when unemployment is low, people's incomes are a lot higher. And because they have a lot more money, they don't need as much help from the government. And so the government, they, don't, they don't ask for the government to help them as much when the unemployment rate is low. And that relates to this idea of automatic stabilizers. And you'll see why in just a minute. First thing I want to do is give you a definition for automatic stabilizer. Okay? It's a government policy already in place that, and I'm going to give you two parts to this, okay? an A and a B. Okay. A government policy already in place that behaves like contractionary fiscal policy and remember that contractionary fiscal policy means that we're running a budget surplus okay behaves like contractionary fiscal policy when the economy is in an inflationary gap and or it behaves like expansionary fiscal policy when the economy is in a recessionary gap. And all, like I said, it's automatic. It happens all by itself. And because it's automatic, because these government policies behave like contractionary fiscal policy when the economy goes into an inflationary gap, we don't have to worry about an information lag. We don't have to worry about a policy lag. All we have to worry about is the impact lag. And because it's happening right away, because it's happening automatically, the impact uh, probably will happen sooner because, because the economy won't get to be as bad as it would have been if all of the policy had to wait for Congress to vote. Okay, So let me show you how automatic stabilizers work. Okay, So we have two possibilities here. We can have an inflationary gap 
and we can have a recessionary gap. In an inflationary gap, the fiscal policy recommended is contractionary, right? Which basically means a budget surplus, right? And what does a budget surplus mean? A budget surplus means to increase taxes and decrease spending, decrease government spending, all right? So when spending goes down and taxes go up, we have a budget surplus, and you, you saw in the previous lessons that that will close an inflationary gap because it will contract output in the economy and bring uh, real GDP down to natural real GDP. But when we're in a recessionary gap, to close the recessionary gap, fiscal policy uh, recommends a budget deficit. And as you've already seen with national debt, when we're in a recessionary gap and we run a budget de deficit, we are going to accumulate more national debt, right? The tax policy, the reason we're going to run a budget deficit is because the tax policy is to decrease taxes but to increase government spending. So spending goes up, taxes go down. Now our spending is higher than our taxes. We don't have enough money to cover all the spending, so we borrow money because we have a budget deficit because we're in a recessionary gap. And then eventually, all that spending, and by decreasing taxes, we leave people with more money to spend, and all that spending hopefully increases GDP, and we come out of the recessionary gap. So here's the bottom line. Basically, whenever we're in an inflationary gap, we need taxes to go up and we need government spending to go down. When we're in a recessionary gap, we need taxes to go down and we need government spending to go up. And we can accomplish both of those things with automatic stabilizers. And here are the two main ideas we're going to deal with uh, in this principles class. The tax policy, the automatic stabilizer that's going to affect tax policy is by implementing, we have implemented a percentage tax rate based on income, based on income. So when income in the economy is higher, taxing goes up. We have an increase in taxing because it's a percentage rate based on income. So when income is higher in the economy, taxes are higher in the economy. When income is lower in the economy, taxes are lower in the economy. And then the automatic stabilizer for spending are welfare programs based on need. Welfare programs based on need. Now, so when people have a lot of need in the economy, they'll come to the government and the government will help them. You know, so they, if they have a lot of need, the government will spend more money on them. But if they don't have very much, if there aren't very many people with need, then the government won't spend as much money because there aren't as many people asking for help. Okay? And so what we're going to do now is we're going to see how these two automatic stabilizers affect taxation and spending in, with budget surpluses and deficits in a recessionary and an inflationary gap. Okay, so what we said at the beginning of this segment was that when we're in a recessionary gap, we know that unemployment is high, right? The unemployment rate is high, meaning there's a lot of people out of work. Because there are a lot of people out of work, income in the economy is lower. But the need that people have for help is higher. So in a recessionary gap, because unemployment is high, income in the economy is low, and need for help is high. Now, because income is low, and the tax rate is based on a percentage of income, that means taxes are going to be low. 
So taxes are going to decrease in a recessionary gap because not as many people are working as many hours. But people now have need. They need help. And because they need help, there is going to be an increase in government spending. More people need help from welfare programs, so the government is going to spend more money, so there's going to be an increase in government spending. Well, what does that lead to? A decrease in taxes and an increase in government spending leads to a budget deficit. And isn't a budget deficit the same thing as expansionary fiscal policy? Expansionary fiscal policy. And this is happening automatically just because there are more people out of work. Congress didn't have to come together and make any decisions about decreasing taxes or increasing spending. It happened automatically. Now we'll see the opposite in an inflationary gap. In an inflationary gap, the unemployment rate is low. There's more people working than necessary. And therefore, income in the economy is going to be higher and the need for help is going to be lower. Because income is higher, and because taxes are based on a percentage of income, that's going to lead to an increase in taxes in the, in the government. But the lower need, people don't need welfare help as much, therefore, government spending will go down, and a decrease in taxes... And, and, or excuse me, an increase in taxes and a decrease in government spending should then result in a budget surplus. And a budget surplus is the prescription when we need contractionary fiscal policy. And so this whole idea of automatic stabilizers is the idea that the government can put into law things that are based on income and need, which naturally fluctuate within the economy based on whether we're in a recessionary gap or an inflationary gap. And then when the unemployment rate starts to go back up, income will go down, need will go up, and these will then fluctuate. We'll then go from a budget surplus to a balanced budget. And then if unemployment keeps going down, we'll then go into a budget deficit, and it will all happen automatically. That is automatic stabilizers.